Medtronic Technologies impacted more than 72 million people in the last year, equating to two people every second. Harnessing the power of technology to take healthcare further, each technology has unique benefits designed to serve patients. The goal of this program is to get closer to the patient and delve into the challenges and impact of each technology in practice. This is the Medtronic MedEd Learning Experience. The Invos monitoring system should not be used as the sole basis for diagnosis or therapy and is intended only as an adjunct in patient assessment. Reliance on the Invo system alone for detecting cerebral desaturation events is not recommended. Medtronic's medical education programs are offered to provide attendees education on the FDA-cleared indications and use of our products when applicable. The contents and conclusions of the following program are solely those of the speakers unless otherwise cited. The speakers are responsible for all content and any necessary permissions. The speakers receive funding from Covidian LP, a Medtronic company, for this speaking engagement. For this segment in the series, we will be discussing near infrared spectroscopy, also known as NIRS, monitoring in the NICU. How does NIRS monitoring work? And why should it be part of monitoring protocols in the NICU? To answer these questions, we are talking with Dr. Muzaffar Ghani Abdul Wahab, Associate Professor in Pediatrics at McMaster University in Ontario, Canada, and Dr. Yasser El Sayed, Neonatologist at the Health Sciences Centre in Winnipeg and Associate Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Manitoba. Let's dive into the conversation. Why is early monitoring so critical for premature babies? For premature babies, the most important period that might impact the future and all of the uh, outcomes that might affect uh, the brain and neuro neurodevelopment, uh, lung-related outcomes, the first few days after birth. During uh, the first 72 hours for any premature infant, the blood flow to the brain and other organs might fluctuate and might change because the circulation should adapt the change from the fetal circulation to the postnatal circulation. In term babies, that might be well tolerated, but uh, unfortunately for premature babies, this is very critical period. The other aspect, uh, which is very important to know how to monitor these babies properly from the first minute of life and how to minimize any kind of injury or ongoing injury for the, the most important organs that might impact the future of uh, those babies, including brain, lung, uh, intestine, and other organs. So monitoring and detecting the issue before it happens is very important to maintain a reasonable or good quality of life, comparable to those with normal gestational age or born at term. And also we need to check that the brain is getting enough oxygen. And the only practical way available now is to monitor the brain oxygen consumption and delivery by near infrared spectroscopy. Can you explain how near infrared spectroscopy monitoring is different from pulse oximetry? We have been considering uh, monitoring with the pulse oximetry for many decades as a standard of care for assessment of uh, arterial oxygen saturation and it has been very successful. But indeed, it just gave us an idea about half of the picture, which is arterial oxygen saturation, and we still missing uh, the other half, which is um, the venous saturation or the tissue oximetry. So monitoring both pulse oximetry and the near infrared spectroscopy, you will get more clear idea about uh, the balance between oxygen delivery and oxygen consumption. Dr. Ghani, what are your thoughts? The NEARS wavelength is little different than the pulse oximetry and mainly looking at what is the same, the oxygenated hemoglobin and the deoxygenated uh, hemoglobin and also myoglobin and other cytochromes within the tissues and the venules. So mainly like up to 70 to 80 percent, the measurement comes from the venules. We need to understand the difference between the oxygen del delivery and tissue extraction of oxygen. If the tissues are in need of more oxygen, they will take more extraction. That will be known only by NEARS, not by the pulse oximetry. Naturally, the tissues are getting less oxygen and they are in need of more oxygen, so they extract more. To continue the aerobic metabolism, that can be detected very early before even it affects 
the vital signs like blood pressure or even other the biochemical markers in the blood. So NIOS can be very useful in diagnosing or detecting the end organ perfusion issues where the tissues are craving for oxygen which is very earliest sign before any circulatory compromise. Premature babies they are at more risk of developing uh, shock which can be a vasodilator shock or cardiogenic shock and also gut injury due to necrotizing trochoitis. All of these challenges might be predicted at early stages with adequate uh, monitoring of the oxygen delivery. And usually without monitoring the tissue oximetry, you may have the infant already at this stage of anaerobic metabolism without notice that he already passed the critical uh, period of increased oxygen extraction. If you don't have the appropriate monitor with uh, tissue oximetry, you may detect just high lactic acidosis, which is kind of late and it might uh, lead to a reversible shock and might be very difficult to reverse it back and death might be the next uh, expected scenario. So we need to avoid that. We need to monitor hemodynamics appropriately as early as possible. Monitoring of uh, hemodynamics in units and the monitoring of uh, hypoxia versus hypoxemia, we are relying on uh, multiple uh, markers. and. Uh, we have seen that the tissue oximetry is one of the early, uh, earliest signs that we can see a marker that might be affected by either decrease in the blood flow or a uh, decrease in the oxygen delivery for any kind of reason. And what do you think are the barriers to adopting NIRS monitoring? The first uh, most important barrier, in my opinion, could be the new technology. So most of the clinicians, they need more orientation about the value, the physiology, and how to uh, interpret abnormal numbers and what are the investigations that should be considered based on abnormal trend or abnormal number. Yeah, one of the main challenges in our neonatal practice uh, that our population is not really a homogeneous population. So we have multiple gestational ages. Uh, from premature baby can be as uh, premature as 22 weeks up to term baby and we can't assume we cannot assume that the normal or normative data for all of them are the same so the number on near fetal spectroscopy machine or the tissue oximetry does not give you exact diagnosis but give you an idea about uh, there is a decompensation process happening and you need to investigate more so more education and more practice uh, maybe more workshops on how to how to use it, the technology and how to interpret the data. Dr. Ghani, could you talk to us about the ways that you've overcome these barriers? So in my experience, the best way of introducing the NEOS monitoring, which is which has major benefits and advantages to our sick population, is first we need to have understanding of the neonatal physiology, the hemodynamic physiology, the oxygenation, what is going on. So there should be a little bit of awareness about why are we monitoring, for what reason. And second, we introduce when is the ideal time to intervene or give additional support when the baby is in need, not with waiting until the baby show up with the circulatory compromise features or signs of circulatory compromise. That is too late. So why is it important to look at the trends with NIRS monitoring? So if you have 20% uh, deviation from the baseline, either up or down, you need to investigate and to correlate that with the clinical uh, overall clinical picture. And you need to get explanation for the deviation, which can be benign or can be transient, but uh, persistence of that deviation, uh, deviation, and if it is really going up or down con uh, consistently, then you need to in continue investigating for that and get a clear answer about the underlying pathophysiology. The trending is so important. Ideally, the trending of NEOS readings should be incorporated into the hemodynamics monitoring too. And you can compare those trending along with the other, the hemodynamic signs, markers, heart rate variability, the blood pressures, and the saturation, plus the venous saturation, or tissue oxygen extraction, everything will come along the same trending that we can compare. It's very important 
to go with the trending of when before the infant is being compromised very early in there so any subtle changes in the trending is the earliest sign we need to look at before even it reflects on other hemodynamic markers so we need to look at trending the number how if it is the tissue oxygenation is falling or where there is an increase in the oxygen extraction that tells that the baby was previously the oxygenation to the tissues are in the normal range that now is being affected we need to do something to the infant the centers who use the nears they use the trend they look at okay now the cerebral regional saturation is getting affected that trend can pick up this is one of the example before changes in any vitals anything else until like after 8 hours you are doing a gas to really find out the pco2 is 25 or 20 but there are centers they have managed pda very well with the use of additional monitoring like nears the nears what it gives information on top of routine monitoring is the tissue oxygenation when ductal steel is significant hemodynamically significant you can easily get a lower regional saturation tissue oxygenation and increased fractional oxygen extraction are there any examples you can think of where nurse has made an important difference during my first year with my capacity as a neonatologist one of my colleagues consulted me to assess a preterm baby with the chronic lung disease who has been on um, 100% oxygen for almost a week and very high setting on mechanical ventilation and uh, the main question how we can wean the oxygen down further and that uh, was one of the first few cases that uh, we used near fetal spectroscopy uh, to titrate the oxygen down for infant with hypoxemic respiratory failure and uh, within few hours and before i before i uh, left the unit the infant was on probably 40% oxygen from 100% and over the next few days with uh, writing down a very clear instruction to the bedside nurse that you need just to uh, be sure that the brain oximetry is between 60 and 80 percent which is kind of a, a, a safe window or uh, target there are many examples we can give how early diagnosis of tissue hypoxia will favor a better outcome in our tiny population so when you look at intervening a baby who is circulatory who is having a circulatory collapse when we intervene at a later stage the time to recover from that illness it delays earlier detection of the tissue hypoxia and intervention early minimizes the complications as well as time to recover and the recovery time significantly reduced to few hours to one or two days when compared to recovery time of many days when we act late could you speak to how you think about value of nurse monitoring relative to the cost so early detection of life threatening issues including shock and also if we are able to uh, monitor appropriately the hemodynamics for premature babies during the first 3 days of life and uh, we are able to minimize the development of intraventricular hemorrhage and also the white matter injury related to hyperoxia or hypoxia we are talking about the future uh, for babies which is a really huge impact and we cannot consider that um, future uh, balanced by any kind of money so if we are talking about uh, end organ performance and maintaining the functions of the most important organs of the body that's very important goal and very important to consider regardless the related cost so you may avoid also using unnecessary medication by relying on nerve spectroscopy so it is both ways early detection of the issue and early intervention and at the same time avoid unnecessary interventions and unnecessary critical use of cardiovascular medications or unnecessary uh, use of higher range of um, oxygen uh, by mechanical ventilation or CPAP unnecessarily which again will impact the brain development lung development and all of other uh, body organs so we think about 
how much the more and more ventilated days in a level 3 unit what will be the cost for times how many babies that is advantage for the the system the hospital and also for the babies i i gave an example about the neck versus a feeding intolerance due to a cosmic protein allergy if you are confident with these technologies that we are we are doing the intestinal ultrasound to look at the wellness of the gut perfusion and the intestinal wall and also adding the nerves we are pretty confident that there is nothing no compromise is going on in splanking circulation and you can start the feeding that will minimize the number of npo days in the hospital and also the better outcome because you are not withholding nutrition enteral nutrition is very important and our last question for today why do you think the nicu should include nurse monitoring simply i can uh, tell you that without near fit spectroscopy uh, you are just getting part of the picture and we published a very important conclusion about implementation of near fit spectroscopy as integrated to other uh, markers parameters of hemodynamics assessment and we found that with using the integrated model we were able to reduce the time to clinical recovery significantly compared to uh, the other conventional approach relying only on blood pressure or other uh, routine uh, parameters more and more tiny premies are surviving no longer now we are concerning about the survivor but we are our concern is about morbidity free survival so in order to provide a disability free survival we need to focus on tissue oxygenation end organ perfusion early intervention before a compromise is happening preventing the complication minimizing the hospital stay in summary nears is a valuable addition to the neonatal monitoring we can detect the tissue hypoxia very early before anaerobic metabolism and lactic acidosis and a circulatory compromise happens many conditions that we can detect very early and taking appropriate steps will prevent or minimize the complications as well as the minimize the recovery time that is very important for the neurological outcome for our tiny preterm babies our goal is happy babies and well baby and we no longer looking at whether just survival beyond that we all we are working towards a disability free happy well graduate from nicu and with that these two technologies will help to achieve the better and the best outcome in our primi population thanks to dr gani and dr el said for such a rich conversation if you want to hear more from these two fantastic doctors you can listen to their other meta discussion about cchd now wherever you find your podcasts this is the medtronic meta learning experience Thank you for listening. Copyright 2022 Medtronic. All rights reserved. Medtronic, Medtronic logo and further together are trademarks of Medtronic. Third-party brands are trademarks of their respective owners. All other brands are trademarks of a Medtronic company. US-PM-220069.